we're starting a brand new series called All the Voices. And it's going to be from John chapter 10. It says, My sheep know my voice. And that's what Jesus said. And yet, I struggle, and so many I know have struggled with, when we thought we heard God to say to do one thing, and the plan failed, and so we wonder what happened. We wonder what voice we listened to, or did we misunderstand? Or perhaps we don't even hear anything at all, and we wonder if God's even speaking. And even worse, we hear a voice that we think is His voice, and it's actually a voice telling us to do something that ends up leading us down a path of seemingly destruction. I remember when one of my children prayed and asked God to speak and they heard nothing. And I've heard many adults express the same experience. And I've had friends say that God told them to do a certain thing, they obeyed, and later they acknowledged that that probably wasn't God at all. And But they had already done what they did. And in this world full of voices, that say we must have this, we must experience this, success is found on this path, and this is the right way to live, etc. We can actually feel like we're drowning in a sea of voices calling out to us, and we want to cover our ears and scream, stop! And we don't want to listen to anyone or anything anymore telling us what to do. So in John 10, Jesus makes this statement about his sheep, and he says, my sheep know my voice. Those who follow him know his voice, and if they do, then why do we have so much trouble hearing and recognizing the voice that we're supposed to know? It seems that I always go back to the story of creation, and this is no different. It's a good place to start to see how things were set up in the beginning. There was a gatekeeper of the garden, and that was God, and he created man and woman, gave them rules to live by, and set watch over the garden. We know that they listened to another voice besides God's and chose to listen to that voice. God had given them instructions about a particular tree and yet gave them all the other blessings in the garden and the serpent honed in on the one forbidden tree and planted a seed of mistrust in the Creator with His voice. In the garden with God, listening to and obeying His voice was safety and provision, but another voice spoke and the created ones listened. In Genesis 1-8, after they disobeyed, the couple heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden, and the next thing they did was hide, because they were now ashamed because of their disobedience. Shame had never been introduced before. After God spoke and told them the consequences of their actions, it says in verse 23 that He banished them from the garden. He closed the gate to the intimate fellowship they had had before that bite. In fact, He guarded the gate with a flaming sword and drove them out. The couple had heard God's voice give them directions on how to live successfully and they entertained another voice that told them the opposite. And the opposite was that they didn't need to obey and that they needed to doubt the goodness of their father. But what they lost when they were driven out was the fellowship with God that they had daily when they walked with him and when they carried with him the knowledge that he was all they needed. But when they entertained another voice, bad things happened. So let's talk about that gate, and let's talk about John 10 and how the sheep know his voice. I read that sheep pens long ago in Bible days were made of stones piled up on top of each other, and for protection there was really only one gate to the pen. Thieves and robbers might try to crawl over the stones, but not a legitimate shepherd. A true shepherd would lie at the gate to protect the sheep from all intruders. In other words, there's only one way into fellowship with God the Father, and that's through Jesus. He said he's the only way. And God told the first couple the only way was to obey. Then he closed the gate and sent those that disobeyed on their way, guarding the gate so they could not return until Jesus. Of all the voices that surround us, there's only one voice that offers life, and that's his voice. Other voices that are introduced to us from childbirth, like kids bullying us at school, or maybe we have had abusive parents that shamed us with criticism or lying thieves that wanted to see us destroyed and whispered seeds of doubt about the goodness of God. So to begin this study on all the voices, we have to acknowledge the gate we must enter in order to even hear the shepherd's voice, and that's the gate that always stands wide open now because of Jesus. He's the good shepherd. He laid across the gate, gave his life for our sins, and invites us in. Because of the fall, we're all outside the gate, but the flaming sword isn't there anymore, but rather Jesus, laid down so that we don't have to die, inviting us into the Father's presence and fellowship where His voice speaks life and never death. More next time. <laughs>